We're now going to talk about triple integrals. So this is quite analogous to double integrals, so the definition is pretty straightforward. We'll start with the rectangular box. R, which will be the Cartesian product of three intervals, A, B, cross, C, D, cross, and well, we could use E and F, but we usually use those letters for other things, so let's make the third interval R, S. Okay, so it's just a uh, rectangular box in Cartesian coordinates. Looks like this. What I've drawn sort of looks like a cube, but the side lengths of the box do not all have to be the same, but they all have to be parallel to the axes. So here's our rectangular box R. And suppose we have a function f on this rectangular box with values in the real numbers. So we want to define the triple integral of f over this box. So we divide the defining intervals into n equal parts. So of x0 is equal to a, it's less than x1, it's less than da da da, up to xn, which is b, um, c is y0, less than y1, less than da da da, to yn equals d, and r equals z0, less than z1, it's less than da da da, up to zn equals s. So this will be spaced with spacing delta x, which is xi minus xi minus 1. This is delta x. This is b minus a over n. Yi y minus yi minus 1 is delta y, which is d minus c over n. And zi minus ci minus 1 is delta z which is s minus r over n. And then we define the triple integral over the box of a function f dv. And now the letter v here stands for volume. So dv you can think of as an element of volume. So it's the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum over i j and k all going from 1 to n, so there are n cubed terms of f of x i j k star comma y i j k star comma z i j k star delta x delta y delta z where x i j k star comma y i j k star comma z i j k star is a sample point in x i minus 1 to x i cross y j minus 1 to y j cross z k minus 1 to z k. So this is a sample point. So what we're doing is we are subdividing the region R into n cubed smaller boxes and we're summing over all of the n cubed little sub boxes of the volume of the sub box, so that's this delta x, delta y, delta z, times the value of the function at some sample point in the box. And it's a fact that this triple integral over R of f dv is well defined if f is continuous for many other functions too. Okay, so well-defined means that the limit converges and the answer you get does not depend on which sample points you choose. Okay, now we can also
do triple integrals over more general regions. So um, there's an analog. Uh oh, first I should have said um, that there's a analog of Fubini's theorem. which says that the triple integral over the box of f dv is the integral from a to b. So x goes from a to b, y goes from c to d, and z goes from r to s of f of x, y, z, dz, dy, dx. And there are five other orders in which you can evaluate the integral. Now, the more general region we might consider is an analog of a type 1 region. In, in three dimensions, there are more sort of types of regions, but we're not going to number them. Anyway, the analog of a type 1 region would be you have some domain d in the xy plane. And over that, you have the graphs of two different functions, one, over, one above the other. And we look at the region between them. Okay, so this upper surface is the graph of some function z equals phi2 of xy. And this lower surface is the graph of some function phi1 of xy. So here phi1 and phi2 are functions on the domain d. So this d is the shadow of the region. Um, and so the set theory notation for this region is it's going to be r is the set of points x, y, z such that x, y is in the domain d in the plane, and phi1 of x, y is less than or equal to z, is less than or equal to phi2 of x, y. Um, and then you can define the integral over r analogously to what we did in two dimensions by picking, taking a big rectangle box containing the domain and multiplying by function which is 1 in the region R and 0 outside of it. And then it's a fact that the triple integral over R of f dv is the double integral over R, sorry, over d, of the integral from phi1 of xy to phi2 of xy, f of xy, z, dz, dA. Okay, so for x and y fixed, we can integrate the z variable from phi1 of xy to phi2 of xy. That gives us some number which depends on x and y. So we have a function of x and y. We now integrate that function over the domain d with respect to area. And that gives us the triple integral. Okay, and then um, to so to expand this further, so if d itself is a type 1 region, so here's d, so x goes from a to b, and y goes between to function, so this is y equals d1 of x, and this is y equals d2 of x. Then, so a set theory notation d is the set of x, y, such that a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b, and g1 of x is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to g2 of x. And we can finally write the whole triple integral 
as the triple integral over r of f dv is the integral from a to b. So x is going from a to b. y is going from g1 of x to g2 of x. And z is going from phi1 of xy to phi2 of xy. And then I have f of xyz um, dz dy dx. And in general, you can evaluate integrals in other orders if you have analogs of type 2 regions, etc. Okay, so let's do an example. So let E be the solid bounded by the surfaces x squared plus d squared equals 4, y equals 0, and y equals 4. And our task is to write the triple integral over E of f dv as an integrated, iterated integral. Okay, so let's draw a picture of this region. So one of our bounding surfaces is x squared plus z squared equals 4. That's a cylinder, which looks like this. And y goes from 0 to 4. So one of the boundary surfaces is a disk where y equals 0, and the other is a disk where y equals 4. So our three bound, bounding surfaces here is this y equals 0, y equals 4, and this is x squared plus z squared equals 4. Okay, so now what do we do? Now we need to turn to a new page. Um, now there are different orders in which we can do this. Let, let's, let's draw the picture again. So one order would be we have um, integrating over z first. So, and then y and then x. So if we do it that way, we have to think what is the possible range of x? So what's the smallest possible value of x and what's the largest possible value of x? Well, the, the shadow of this region in the xy plane What does that look like? Well, y goes from 0 to 4. We know that. And what's the range of x? Well, um, since x squared plus z squared equals 4, if you look in the xz plane, we have a circle of radius 2. So x goes between minus 2 and 2. And y goes from 0 to 4. So the shadow, this is not to scale, but it looks like this. So this is x equals minus 2, this is x equals uh, plus 2, and this is y equals 4. Okay, so x goes from minus 2 to 2. And what's the range of y? Well, we can also see that from the shadow in the xy plane. Um, in general, y goes from 0 to 2, um, and this doesn't have anything to do with x. In general, the limits of y might be, depend on x. But for this particular example, they don't. So y always, no matter what x is, y can go from 0 to 4. And then what are the z limits? Well, for a given x and y, what's the possible range of z? Well, we have this equation, x squared plus z squared equals 4. So the boundary is where x squared plus z squared equals 4. Um, I could also write that as z 
equals plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. So that's the boundary, and the actual range of z goes in between these two values. So the lower limit of z is minus the square root of 4 minus x squared, and the upper limit of z is plus the square root of 4 minus x squared. Then I have f dz dy dx. Right? Now, in general, z can go from minus 2 to 2. However, once you have fixed what x and y are, then you've restricted the possible values of z, and they can only go between minus the square root of 4 minus x squared and plus the square root of 4 minus x squared. Let's try writing this in a different order. So, what if we want to do, say, dx dy dz? So this means we're integrating over x first, and then y, and then over z. Okay, so the outer integral is now over z, and we have to say, what is the possible range of z? Not knowing anything else. So not knowing anything else, z can go from minus 2 to 2. Okay, we could look at the shadow in the yz plane. Well, in fact, it's, um, well, well, let's see. So here's y, and here's z. So this is another rectangle. So now z can go from minus 2 to 2, and y can go from 0 to 4. So this is analogous to the shadow um, in the xz plane, in the xy plane, which we do over, over, four, over there. We've just um, switched the role of x and z here. Okay, so, so z goes from minus 2 to 2, and for a given z, we can say what's the range of y, and again, y can be anything, even if z is fixed. So y can go from 0 to 4, and then what are the possible values of x? So now the, the boundary circle, I could write this instead as x equals plus or minus the square root of 4 minus c squared. So x goes from minus the square root of 4 minus c squared, I didn't want that color, oh well, it doesn't matter, to plus square root of 4 minus c squared and then f dx dy dz.